Hello there, Mark Cunningham here. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how you can account for business expenses paid for personally by using expense claims in Xero. Now the principle is pretty much the same all around the world. So you can get value out of this video, no matter which country you're in, even though I'm going to use the Australian version of Xero's demo company in this demonstration. And if you'd like to learn more about Xero, then check out the links to our courses in the description below. Okay, now in this video, we're going to learn how to reconcile or account for business expenses that you pay for with your personal money. Now there's a few different ways you can do this in Xero, and in this video, we're going to do it by using an expense claim. And the reconciliation is done with either a director's loan account or the owner's funds introduced account. And the one that you use depends on the type of business that you run. So for a company, you would most likely use the director's loan account. And for a sole tradership or a partnership, etc., you would use the owner funds introduced account. So no matter what you do, the goal is to have the expense go to the profit and loss. And that's a debit if you're into your debits and credits. And you want the payment to go to the balance sheet which is a credit. So after we've done the reconciliation, I'll show you how those end up on those two reports. Now, just a couple of things before we get started. You'll want your business bank account to be hooked up to zero, but you don't want your personal bank account to be hooked up to zero. So even if you've paid for the expense personally by using your personal bank account, do not hook it up to zero because you don't need to do that for this exercise. All right, so let's go into zero now and we'll see how this is done. Okay, so over here in Zero's demo company, we just wanna go up to business and expense claims. And then we want to click on new expense and expense claim. And it's in here that we're going to put the details of the expense for our business that we paid for personally. So I'll just start off by putting in the amount. So I'm just assuming that this is $100 plus GST. And the description is going to be a fee for the registration of a business name. Okay, so obviously if you've got something different to put in there, make sure you put in uh, the description for the expense that you paid for. And if you need to put more than one thing in, you can just click on this itemize uh, link up here and you can put more than one line, but I'll just leave it at one line for this demonstration. Okay, so next we wanna click on personal money because we paid for it out of our personal funds. And then you can just put the name of where you actually spent the money in here. Okay, so I've just put in ASIC there, the Australian Securities and Investment Commission. And then just pick the date on which you actually uh, paid for the expense. So I'll just pick a date back here, right there. And then down here, we need to select the account. So this is the general ledger account that you need to pick here. So I'm going to just put mine to general expenses there. Um, obviously, if you've done something different, like if you bought some stationery, um, for example, go and pick your stationery account down here. And you can do it for just about anything. You can even do it for fixed assets like computers, etc. But for this particular um, video, I'm just going to say it's a general expense. All right, down here, you've got a couple of um, optional things as well. You've got region, which is a tracking category here in the demo company. I'm not going to worry about that. You've got assigned to customer as well. If you want to assign this to a particular customer of yours that you've got in your zero system. And then you've got label as well, which I'm not going to use. But just down the bottom, it's a bit hard to see, but just make sure you've also got um, whether it's including or excluding tax selected correctly. So I'm going to say that the $100 I've got down here, if you can see that, is excluding tax. So uh, that means that um, it's going to be $100 plus GST, you can see there. So the total that I spent is actually $110. And that's what I'm going to um, put through um, as the total expense. All right, scrolling back up then, um, if you need to go through an approval process, you can save it as a draft or submit it for approval. I'll just go ahead and approve it. Okay, so now if we go over here to the to pay tab, we can see that we've got that one that we just put in there. So there's the fee for the registration of the business name, $110. 
Okay, so the next thing we can do is have a look at where this goes. So if we click on, on here, we can go to view bill, but I'll just actually bring it up in another screen. So I'll just duplicate the screen and I'll go to business and bills and it'll be over here in awaiting payment. Okay, so there it is down there. You can see it says expense claims. It's got my name there and then it's got the 17th of August. Um, it's got a due date on it as well, um, which you can change because obviously we did pay for it already through our personal um, funds and it's got the amount. So I'll just click into it. Okay, so like I said, you can go and change that um, due date if you like, but I'll just leave it um, for this exercise. So what we've got here is a bill um, that has been created in zero that is not yet paid for in the system. So that's come from here. Now, as we know, we have actually paid it. So we didn't pay for it out of our business bank account. We paid for it out of our personal funds. So what we need to do is use this little section down here to make a payment as it says. But first I'll just show you what you need to set up. If we go to duplicate and then we'll go to our chart of accounts. Okay, and if we go to the liabilities tab and I'll just scroll down to the bottom and these two accounts down the bottom here, these are the general ledger codes that you'll use if you're not running a company, so you're not using a director's loan um, for when you put your own personal money into the business or you take money out of the business to use personally. And you can see here, it says it in the descriptions, funds contributed by the owner and withdrawals by the owner. So the one we're going to use is this one, funds contributed because we paid for an expense. So if I just click into it, you can see that it's a current liability um, and it's called owner A funds introduced. You can change that name if you want. If you don't want the A there, or you want to put your own name there. A little description here, and then it's BAS excluded. That's the tax rate that's chosen because it's outside of GST law. But the main thing that you want is you need to make sure that this enable payments to this account is checked. And when you have that checked, then you can go ahead and use it over here in make a payment. So that's all set up properly. If you need to set that up in your uh, zero file, you can just use these settings here. I'll just cancel out of here and go back over here. Okay, so now we'll do that. So we've got amount paid $110, date paid would have been the 17th, paid from. So you can see here, you've got your business bank accounts that are set up in the demo company. So in your real business, you'll have your own business bank accounts there. That's not what we're selecting because we didn't pay for it out of our business bank account. We paid for it personally. So we choose this one, owner A funds introduced, which is that one over here owner A funds introduced. Okay, and then you can put a reference in there if you like. And when you're done, just click add payment. Okay, so that's moved out of that bucket now and into paid. And here it is here, this one here, the expense claim, 110, if I click into it, you can see now we've got that same bill, except it's got less payment, $110, and amount due nothing. So that's done, if we go back over to here, we'll probably just need to refresh this. Okay, so that's now moved out of the to pay uh, bucket over here. If I go to all, okay, there it is. You can see that one there that we created. The expense claim is now paid $110. So that's paid there. That's paid on the bill. So that's all good. So let's just finish now by duplicating the screen. And we'll go to our profit and loss report. Okay, so that's run for the month of August there, which is when we actually paid for the expense. So if we scroll down into our general expenses line here, if we just click into it, it looks like there's a couple in there. Right, you can see there, that's the expense claim we did for $100. So that comes through obviously um, net of GST on the PL, but that's the one there. So that's your debit side. So if we just duplicate that again, and we'll go to the balance sheet and we'll run it at today's date. All right, if we scroll down, we can see here in current liabilities, we can see we've got the owner A funds introduced account there. 
there's your 110 there. I'll just click into it. Okay, just to confirm, that's the expense claim there. So this is the credit side. So if I just go back, just to explain again that the credit side of the entry does not come out of the business bank account or savings account or whatever you've got up there because you didn't pay for it um, with your business funds. It was paid for through personal funds and that's why it comes out through this liability account down here. So that's the credit side. That's the debit side on the profit and loss. And then over here, like we saw before, the bill has been paid and the expense claim has also ended up over here paid. Okay, so that's how if you pay for something with your personal funds, you can do an expense claim um, in zero, and you can put the payment through that uh, owner funds introduced account instead of a business bank account.